Thomas Francis Dorsey Jr. was an American jazz trombonist, composer, conductor and bandleader of the big band era. He was known as the «sentimental gentleman of swing», because of his smooth-toned trombone playing. His theme song was, I'm getting sentimental over you. His technical skill on the trombone gave him renown among other musicians. He was the younger brother of bandleader Jimmy Dorsey. After Dorsey broke with his brother in the mid-1930s, he led an extremely successful band from the late 1930s into the 1950s. He is best remembered for standards such as, Opus 1, Song of India, Marie, on Treasure Island, and his biggest hit single, I'll Never Smile Again. Early life born in Mahanoy Plain, Pennsylvania, Thomas Francis Dorsey Jr. was the second of four children born to Thomas Francis Dorsey Sr., a bandleader, and Teresa Dorsey. He and Jimmy, his older brother by slightly less than two years, became known as the Dorsey brothers. The two younger siblings were Mary and Edward, who died young. Tommy Dorsey studied the trumpet with his father but later switched to trombone. At age 15, Jimmy recommended Tommy to replace Russ Morgan in the Scranton Sirens, a territory band in the 1920s. Tommy and Jimmy worked in bands led by Tall Henry, Rudy Valley, Vincent Lopez, and Nathaniel Shilkret. In 1923, Dorsey followed Jimmy to Detroit to play in Gene Goldkett's band and returned to New York in 1925 to play with the California Ramblers. In 1927, he joined Paul Whiteman. In 1929, the Dorsey brothers had their first hit with Coquette for OK Records. In 1934, the Dorsey Brothers Band signed with Decca, having a hit with, I Believe in Miracles. Glenn Miller was a member of the Dorsey Brothers Orchestra in 1934 and 1935, composing, Annie's Cousin Fanny, Tomorrow's Another Day, Harlem Chapel Chimes, and, Desse Dem Dos, all recorded for Decca, for the band. Acrimony between the brothers led to Tommy Dorsey walking out to form his own band in 1935 as the orchestra was having a hit with, Every Little Moment. Dorsey's orchestra was known primarily for its renderings of ballads at dance tempos, frequently with singers such as Jack Leonard and Frank Sinatra. His own band in 2009, Buddy DeFranco recalled recording, Opus 1, with Dorsey in the 1940s, commenting on Dorsey's desire to be precise and exact. Expanding on DeFranco's opinions about Dorsey, writer Peter Levinson said, he wanted things to be done his way. The band was popular almost from the moment it signed with RCA Victor for, On Treasure Island, the first of four hits in 1935. After his 1935 recording, however, Dorsey's manager dropped the «hot jazz» that Dorsey had mixed with his own lyrical style, and instead had Dorsey play pop and vocal tunes. Dorsey kept his Clambake 7 as a Dixieland group that played during performances. Dorsey became the co-host of the Raleigh Cool program on the radio with comedian Jack Pearl, then become the host. By 1939, Dorsey was aware of criticism that his band lacked a jazz feeling. He hired arranger Cy Oliver away from the Jimmy Lunceford band. Cy Oliver's arrangements include, On the Sunny Side of the Street, and, TD's Boogie Woogie. Oliver also composed two of the new band's signature instrumentals, Well, Get It, and, Opus One. In 1940, Dorsey hired singer Frank Sinatra from bandleader Harry James. Sinatra made 80 recordings from 1940 to 1942 with the Dorsey Band. Two of those 80 songs are, In the Blue of Evening, and, This Love of Mine. Sinatra achieved his first great success as a vocalist in the Dorsey Band and claimed he learned breath control from watching Dorsey play trombone. Cy Oliver and Sinatra did a posthumous tribute album to Dorsey on Sinatra's reprise records. I Remember Tommy appeared in 1961. In turn, Dorsey said his trombone style was heavily influenced by Jack Teagarden. Among Dorsey's staff of arrangers was Axel Stordahl who arranged for Sinatra in his Columbia and Capitol years. Another member of the Dorsey band was trombonist Nelson Riddle, who later had a partnership as one of Sinatra's arrangers and conductors in the 1950s and afterwards. Another noted Dorsey arranger, who, in the 1950s, married and was professionally associated with Dorsey veteran Joe Stafford, was Paul Weston. Bill Finnegan, an arranger who left Glenn Miller's civilian band, arranged for the Tommy Dorsey band from 1942 to 1950. The band featured a number of instrumentalists, singers, and arrangers in the 1930s and 40s, including trumpeters Zeke Zarki, Bunny Berrigan, Ziggy Ellman, Doc Severinsen, and Charlie Shavers, pianists Milt Raskin, Jess Stacy, clarinetists Buddy DeFranco, Johnny Mintz, and Peanuts Hucko. Others who played with Dorsey were drummers Buddy Rich, Louis Belson, Dave Tuff saxophonist Tommy Reed, and singer Sinatra, Jack Leonard, Ed Ith Wright, Joe Stafford with the Pied Pipers, Dick Hames, and Connie Haynes. In 1944, Dorsey hired the Sentimentalists, who replaced the Pied Pipers. Dorsey also performed with singer Connie Boswell he hired ex-band leader and drummer Gene Krupa after Krupa's arrest for marijuana possession in 1943. In 1942, Artie Shaw broke up his band, and Dorsey hired the Shaw String Section. As George T. Simon in Metronome magazine observed at the time, they're used in the foreground and background for vocal effects and for Tommy's trombone. Dorsey made further business decisions in the music industry. 
He loaned money to Glenn Miller enabling him to launch his band of 1938, but Dorsey saw the loan as an investment, entitling him to a percentage of Miller's income. When Miller balked at this, the angry Dorsey got even by sponsoring a new band led by Bob Chester, and hiring arrangers who deliberately copied Miller's style and sound. Dorsey branched out in the mid-1940s and owned two music publishing companies, Sun and Embassy. After opening at the Los Angeles Ballroom, the Hollywood Palladium on the Palladium's first night, Dorsey's relations with the ballroom soured and he opened a competing ballroom, the Casino Garden circa 1944. Dorsey also owned for a short time a trade magazine called The Bandstand. Tommy Dorsey disbanded his own orchestra at the end of 1946. Dorsey might have broken up his own band permanently following World War II, as many big bands did due to the shift in music economics following the war, but Tommy Dorsey's album for RCA Victor, All Time Hits, placed in the top ten records in February 1947. In addition, How Are Things in Glockamora? A single recorded by Dorsey, became a top ten hit in March 1947. As a result, Dorsey was able to reorganize a big band in early 1947. The Dorsey brothers were also reconciling. The biographical film The Fabulous Dorseys describes sketchy details of how the brothers got their start from the bottom up into the jazz era of one-nighters, the early days of radio in its infancy stages, and the onward march when both brothers ended up with Paul Whiteman before 1935 when the Dorsey brothers' orchestra split into two. In the early 1950s, Tommy Dorsey moved from RCA Victor back to Decca. He was promised $2,000 if he switched to their label. However, he was reported to have collected $2,500 instead. Jimmy Dorsey broke up his big band in 1953. Tommy invited him to join as a feature attraction. In 1953, the Dorseys focused their attention on television. On December 26, 1953, the brothers appeared with their orchestra on Jackie Gleason's CBS television show, which was preserved on Kinescope and later released on home video by Gleason. The brothers took the unit on tour and onto their own television show, stage show, from 1954 to 1956. In January 1956, the Dorseys made rock music history introducing Elvis Presley on his national television debut. Presley, then a regional country singer, made six guest appearances on stage show promoting his first releases for RCA Victor several months before his more familiar visits to the Milton Berle, Steve Allen, and Ed Sullivan variety programs. Personal life Dorsey was married three times. His first wife was 16-year-old Mildred Toots Kraft, with whom he eloped in 1922, when he was 17. The couple had two children, Patricia and Thomas F. Dorsey III. In 1935, they moved to Tall Oaks, a 21-acre estate in Bernardsville, New Jersey. They divorced in 1943 after Dorsey's affair with his former singer Edith Wright. Dorsey's second wife was film actress Patricia Dane in 1943, and they were divorced in 1947, but not before he gained headlines for striking actor John Hall when Hall embraced her. Finally, Dorsey married Jane Carl New on March 27, 1948, in Atlanta, Georgia. She had been a dancer at the Copacabana nightclub in New York City. Tommy and Jane Dorsey had two children, Catherine Susan and Steve. Death and aftermath Dorsey died on November 26, 1956, at his home in Greenwich, Connecticut, a week after his 51st birthday. He had begun taking sleeping pills regularly at this time, causing him to become heavily sedated. He choked to death in his sleep after having eaten a large meal. Jimmy Dorsey led his brother's band until his own death from throat cancer the following year. At that point, trombonist Warren Covington became leader of the band with Jane Dorsey's blessing as she owned the rights to her late husband's band and name. Billed as the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra starring Warren Covington, they reached number 7 on the Billboard charts and earned a gold record in fall of 1958 with the hit single, T for Two Cha Cha. The band was also fronted by Irby Green after Dorsey's death in 1956. After Covington led the band, tenor saxophonist Sam Donahue led it from 1961, continuing until 1966. Frank Sinatra Jr. made his professional singing debut with the band at Dallas Memorial Theater in Texas in 1963. Later, trombonist and bandleader Buddy Morrow led the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra from 1977 until his death on September 27, 2010. Jane Dorsey died of natural causes at the age of 79, in Miami, Florida, in 2003. Tommy and Jane Dorsey are interred together in Kensico Cemetery in Valhalla, New York. Number 1 hits Tommy Dorsey had a run of 286 Billboard chart hits. The Dorsey Band had 17 number one hits with his orchestra in the 1930s and 1940s including, On Treasure Island, The Music Goes, Round and Around, You, Marie, Satan Takes a Holiday, The Big Apple, Once in a While, The Dipsy Doodle, Our Love, All the Things You Are, Indian Summer, and, Dolores. He had two more number one hits in 1935 when he was a member of the Dorsey Brothers Orchestra, Lullaby of Broadway, number one for two weeks, and, Chasing Shadows, number one for three weeks. His biggest hit was, I'll Never Smile Again, featuring Frank Sinatra on vocals, which was number one for 12 weeks on the Billboard Pop Singles Chart in 1940. RCA Victor. 
scored with There Are Such Things, which had a Sinatra vocal. It hit number one in January 1943, as did In the Blue of the Evening, another Dorsey record featuring Sinatra, in August, while a third Dorsey, Sinatra release, It's Always You, hit the top five later in the year, and a fourth, I'll Be Seeing You, reached the top ten in 1944. It should be added that these 1943 and 1944 Sinatra hits were older recordings reissued because the 1942–44 musician strike prevented Sinatra, now a popular singer, from recording new material. The website, Tommy Dorsey A Songwriter's Friend, says, The orchestra had over 200 top 20 recordings including the number one hits, The Music Goes Round and Round, Alone, You, Marie, Satan Takes a Holiday, The Big Apple, Once in a While, The Dipsy Doodle, Music, Maestro, Please, Our Love, Indian Summer, All the Things You Are, I'll Never Smile Again, Dolores, There Are Such Things, and, In the Blue of the Evening.